In the relentless contest of survival, Mother Nature ceaselessly innovates. Some of her most fascinating inventions are found in the plant kingdom, where an array of flora have evolved an astonishing capability. They eat animals. Let's explore this incredible world, starting with the most famous carnivorous plant, the Venus flytrap. Number 1. Venus flytrap, Dianaea muscipula. The Venus flytrap, Dianaea muscipula, is perhaps the most iconic of all carnivorous plants. Originating from the subtropical wetlands on the east coast of the United States, it presents an intriguing evolution of predatory botanical tactics. Trapping its prey within a unique jaw-like leaf structure, the Venus flytrap exhibits a level of dynamism rarely seen in the plant kingdom. The Venus flytrap lures its victims, typically insects and spiders, with a sweet-smelling nectar. The inner surfaces of its trap leaves are adorned with tiny hair-like structures, known as trigger hairs. When an unsuspecting victim steps on these trigger hairs twice within 20 seconds, it initiates a rapid change in cell pressure, causing the leaves to snap shut in less than a second. A perfectly engineered natural trap. Once shut, the trap forms an airtight seal, akin to a stomach, where it starts to secrete digestive enzymes. These enzymes dissolve the soft tissues of the prey, which is then absorbed by the plant. This process takes around 5, 12 days after which the trap reopens, leaving behind the indigestible exoskeleton of the prey. This hunting strategy provides the plant with vital nutrients like nitrogen and phosphorus, which are often deficient in the wet, acidic soils they inhabit. Surprisingly, despite its predatory nature, the Venus flytrap is not a particularly robust plant. It is vulnerable to frost and requires a lot of sunlight and constantly moist soil to survive. Its natural habitat has also been drastically reduced by human activities, leading to it being classified as vulnerable by the IUCN. Conservation efforts are ongoing to preserve this unique species and ensure it continues to surprise and fascinate future generations. The Venus flytrap, with its fascinating carnivorous lifestyle and delicate ecological niche, provides a glimpse into the ingenious adaptations of nature, reminding us that in the world of plants, there is far more than what meets the eye. Number 2. Pitcher Plant, Nepenthes Among the world of carnivorous plants, the genus Nepenthes, known commonly as pitcher plants, holds a reputation for its eerie, pitcher-shaped traps. These exotic and diverse plants are predominantly found in Southeast Asia, with a few species extending to Madagascar, Seychelles, Australia, and even India. Each species of Nepenthes manifests an array of pitcher forms, presenting a compelling palette of colors, shapes, and sizes. Each pitcher starts as a small bud that gradually expands, developing a lid in the process. The interior is a death trap, a slippery surface leading to a pool of digestive enzymes, the trap's mechanism is quite subtle. Its lip, or peristome, secretes a sweet nectar irresistible to insects. When an insect lands on the peristome, it finds itself on a treacherously slippery surface. Struggling to maintain grip, the insect eventually falls into the pitcher's deadly pool, unable to escape due to the pitcher's slick, waxy inner walls and the paralyzing fluid below. This fluid not only drowns the prey, but also contains enzymes and bacteria that help in breaking down the insect, allowing the plant to absorb the nutrients. Remarkably, some pitcher plants have evolved to target not only insects, but also larger prey. For instance, the largest known species, Nepenthes raja, has been known to trap and digest rodents, birds, and even small monkeys, proving the astonishing lengths nature can go to when pushed by the constraints of nutrient-poor environments. Number 3. Sundew, Drosera The sundew or Drosera is another marvel among carnivorous plants. The genus is widespread across every continent except Antarctica, with more than 194 known species. These plants owe their name, sundew, to their appearance, glistening drops of mucilage at the end of tentacles that cover their leaves, giving the illusion of morning dew sparkling in the sun. Each mucilage drop, however, is more than just attractive. It's a sweetly scented lure for unsuspecting insects. The moment an insect lands on the leaf, it finds itself stuck in the sticky mucilage. As the insect struggles to free itself, it triggers the tentacles to move, gradually wrapping the insect and pulling it towards the leaf's center. 
Their alien-like beauty, combined with their lethal trapping strategy, makes the sundew a riveting example of survival and adaptation in the world of carnivorous plants. Number 4. Bladderwort, Utricularia The bladderwort, or Utricularia, is a carnivorous plant that stands as a testament to the intricacies of evolutionary adaptation. Boasting over 200 species, this plant genus is distributed globally, flourishing in fresh and brackish waters and damp or waterlogged soils. A defining characteristic of bladderworts is their bladder-like traps, minute hollow structures that dot their submerged, rootless stems. These bladders, which can range in size from less than a millimeter to over a centimeter, are the source of the plant's carnivorous nature. They operate on an intricate mechanism of underwater suction, making the bladderwort a lethal trapper of minute aquatic invertebrates, such as water fleas and nematodes. The bladder's trap door is coated with trigger hairs. When a small creature swims by and brushes against these hairs, it disrupts the seal of the trap door, resulting in a rapid inflow of water that sucks the unsuspecting creature into the bladder. The door then snaps shut, and the plant begins secreting digestive enzymes to break down its prey. This entire process happens in less than a millisecond, making it one of the fastest movements in the plant kingdom. Bladderworts aren't just fascinating for their carnivorous behavior, they're also known for their beautiful flowers, which starkly contrast with their lethal hunting strategy. These flowers often bloom just above the water or ground surface and come in a range of colors and shapes, attracting pollinators and making bladderworts popular among horticulturists. Number 5. Waterwheel Plant, Aldrovanda vesiculosa. Resembling a stretched-out Venus flytrap, the waterwheel plant, Aldrovanda vesiculosa, is an aquatic, rootless, free-floating carnivorous plant found in Europe, Africa, Asia, and Australia. Its common name comes from its distinct arrangement of whirled trap leaves, which give it the appearance of a waterwheel. The traps of the waterwheel plant operate much like those of the Venus flytrap. Each trap is made up of two lobes, hinged together with trigger hairs on the inside. When small aquatic organisms, such as mosquito larvae or tiny crustaceans, touch these trigger hairs, the trap quickly snaps shut, capturing the prey inside. Once trapped, the prey is digested with enzymes, and the nutrients are absorbed to feed the plant. Unlike its famous cousin, the waterwheel plant is entirely aquatic, with its traps fully submerged. This creates a unique challenge, to close the trap without letting water dilute the digestive enzymes inside. The plant overcomes this challenge by producing a water-displacing mucilage inside the trap, ensuring efficient digestion. Sadly, despite its fascinating adaptation, the waterwheel plant is under threat, with habitat loss and water pollution causing a significant decline in its populations. As of today, it is considered an endangered species, reminding us of the importance of protecting these intriguing examples of nature's ingenuity. Number 6. Butterwort, Pinguicula Delicate yet deadly, the butterwort, or pinguicula, is a captivating example of a carnivorous plant. The genus Pinguicula, derived from the Latin word pinguis meaning fat, references the plant's thick, greasy leaves that play a crucial role in its carnivorous lifestyle. Distributed throughout the Northern Hemisphere with a concentration in Central and South America, butterworts thrive in a variety of habitats, from damp alpine meadows to sunny, rocky outcrops. The butterwort's strategy of trapping prey is reminiscent of sundews. Its leaves are covered in tiny glandular hairs that secrete a sticky, glue-like substance. This substance not only gives the plant its buttery appearance, but also serves a dual purpose, luring and ensnaring. Small insects, attracted by the glistening secretion, land on the leaf only to find themselves trapped in this botanical quicksand. The struggle of the trapped insect triggers the plant to produce more sticky mucilage, further entrapping the prey. This passive trapping strategy means that the butterwort requires no energy expenditure to catch its prey, making it a highly efficient predator. Additionally, the plant is not picky about its diet, feasting on a variety of insects, from gnats and fruit flies to small beetles and spiders, depending on its habitat. Once an insect is securely trapped, the plant's second type of glands, known as digestive glands, kick into action. These glands exude a cocktail of enzymes that break down the insect's soft tissues, turning it into a nutrient-rich soup. The same glands then absorb these nutrients, feeding the plant and contributing to its growth and reproduction. 
One of the unique characteristics of butterworts is their seasonal dimorphism. In regions with a temperate climate, butterworts develop two distinct types of leaves depending on the season. During the summer growing season, they produce their characteristic sticky, carnivorous leaves to make the most of the abundant insect prey. In contrast, during the winter dormant season, they produce non-carnivorous, succulent leaves that serve as a protective rosette, helping the plant survive harsh conditions. Butterworts are also known for their charming, orchid-like flowers. These flowers, often brightly colored, are held high above the sticky leaves on a long stalk to avoid trapping potential pollinators. The contrast between the plant's beautiful flowers and its deadly leaves is one of the intriguing paradoxes of the butterwort. Cultivating butterworts has become popular among carnivorous plant enthusiasts due to their minimal care requirements and the variety of species available each with unique leaf forms and flower colors. However, while they are admired for their beauty and peculiar carnivorous trait, butterworts also play an important ecological role. By trapping and feeding on insects, they help control pest populations in their natural habitats. Furthermore, in some cultures, butterworts have been utilized for medicinal purposes. For instance, in Europe, certain species were traditionally used to curdle milk and to treat wounds, thanks to the plant's antimicrobial properties. The butterwort, with its deceptive allure and fascinating biology, is a testament to the complexities of evolution. Its survival strategy, rooted in both the challenges of nutrient-poor environments and the abundance of small invertebrate prey, exemplifies the amazing adaptability of life on Earth. Number 7. Lobster Pot Trap, Gen Lisi. Genlisia, commonly referred to as corkscrew plants, encompass roughly 30 species of carnivorous plants native to Central and South America and Africa. These intriguing plants are often found in wet habitats with poor soil nutrients. Their common name, lobster pot trap, pertains to their unique trapping mechanism that mirrors a lobster pot's one-way entrance. The most distinctive part of Genlisia is its underground, or sometimes underwater, Y-shaped modified leaves. These leaves possess a complex structure that forms a spiral or corkscrew shape, with numerous minute hair-lined entryways that guide prey into a one-directional spiral. This spiraling tunnel leads to a digestive chamber where the plant secretes enzymes to break down the prey. The microscopic organisms that primarily form the plant's diet, like protozoa and bacteria, are drawn into the traps by the flow of water created by the plant. Once they enter the trap, they're unable to navigate back due to the inward-pointing hairs that guide them downwards towards the digestive chamber. Number 8. Corkscrew Plant, Genlacea. The corkscrew plant, a moniker often applied to the entire genus Genlacea, demonstrates an alternative strategy of carnivory in the plant kingdom. While most carnivorous plants trap their prey above ground, the corkscrew plant captures and digests its prey underground or underwater, utilizing its uniquely evolved, intricate, lobed leaves. These lobes form a system of underground traps, winding in a corkscrew pattern. The upper part of the trap is lined with bright, attractive cells and exudes a sweet aroma that lures the prey into the structure. Once the prey is inside, the complex, spiraling architecture disorients them, leading them deeper into the trap, which ultimately concludes in a digestive chamber. Despite being microscopic, the prey provides the corkscrew plant with essential nutrients absent from the nutrient-poor environments in which it thrives. These nutrients aid the plant in its growth and reproduction, allowing it to blossom with delicate, orchid-like flowers above ground. Interestingly, Genlisia is one of the few plant genera that have been observed to trap and digest pollen, suggesting that they can augment their nutrient intake by capturing and digesting non-animal sources when required. The corkscrew plant is a profound testament to the incredible lengths nature will go to survive in challenging environments. Its underground predatory tactics remind us that not all carnivorous plants rely on visual lures or dramatic movements. Some, like Genlisea, weave a silent, unseen trap that is every bit as deadly. Number 9. Cobra Lily, Darlingtonia Californica. Nestled in the serpentine soils and cool bogs of Northern California and Oregon, resides a unique serpent-esque carnivorous plant known as the Cobra Lily, or Darlingtonia Californica. 
Named for its uncanny resemblance to a rearing cobra, complete with a forked leaf structure that resembles fangs or a serpent's tongue, the cobra lily employs a trapping strategy that is as mesmerizing as its appearance. Unlike many other pitcher plants that lure their prey with nectar, the cobra lily uses a combination of visual, tactile, and olfactory lures. The plant's translucent leaf windows confuse insects, making them believe they can escape by flying towards the light. The red and yellow coloring of the plant, as well as the sweet scent it emits, further attract prey. Once inside the pitcher, insects find themselves in a disorienting light show, with patches of light coming through the plant's windows, leading them deeper into the pitcher's tube. The walls of the tube are smooth and waxy, which makes escape virtually impossible. In their desperation, insects eventually tumble down into the pitcher's base, where they drown in the pool of water before being broken down by enzymes and absorbed by the plant. Interestingly, the cobra lily does not produce its digestive enzymes. Instead, it relies on a community of bacteria that thrive in the pool of water within the pitcher. This communal relationship further underscores the unique adaptations and interactions that carnivorous plants have evolved in response to their challenging environments. Number 10. Tropical Pitcher Plant, Nepenthes Raja. From the montane regions of Borneo, the Nepenthes Raja, commonly known as the Raja Brooks Pitcher Plant or the King of Pitcher Plants, stands out for its colossal size. This tropical pitcher plant is reputed to have the largest pitcher of any carnivorous plant, large enough to hold more than two liters of water and capable of capturing prey as large as small rodents. Like its smaller pitcher plant relatives, Nepenthes raja lures insects and small animals with a sweet-smelling nectar. The lip of the pitcher is slippery, causing the prey to fall into the trap, where they are digested by enzymes in the water. However, it's the plant's size that allows it to capture larger prey, including rats, lizards, and even birds, though such large prey is rare and insects remain its primary diet. Interestingly, the Nepenthes raja has also been observed to have a symbiotic relationship with the mountain tree shrew. The tree shrew uses the plant as a toilet, and the plant utilizes the nitrogen in the tree shrew's droppings as a nutrient source. This mutualistic relationship highlights the intricate ecological webs woven by these carnivorous plants. Despite its impressive size and unique ecological relationships, the Nepenthes raja is considered an endangered species due to habitat loss. Its story serves as a reminder of the importance of conservation efforts to preserve not just individual species, but the rich and complex ecosystems they inhabit. Number 11. Dewey Pine, Drosophyllum lusitanicum. Stepping into the arid landscapes of the Iberian Peninsula, one might encounter a carnivorous plant that defies expectations, the dewy pine or Drosophyllum lusitanicum. This solitary plant, preferring to grow alone or in small clusters, features elongated, needle-like leaves that sparkle in the sunlight due to droplets of a sticky substance used to capture prey. What distinguishes the dewy pine from most carnivorous plants is its adaptation to dry, sunny environments. While others typically favor humid, nutrient-poor habitats, this plant thrives in Mediterranean heathlands. Its root system is extensive, reaching deep into the soil to access water and enabling it to tolerate arid conditions. The dewy pine captures its prey, primarily small insects, with a passive trapping strategy. Its leaves are covered with long, glandular tentacles that secrete a sticky mucilage, Attracted by the sweet scent, insects land on the leaves and become trapped in the sticky substance. As the insect struggles, more mucilage is produced, further entrapping it. Enzymes are then secreted to digest the insect, and the resulting nutrients are absorbed through the leaf surface. An interesting note about the dewy pine is that despite being carnivorous, it's less dependent on catching prey for nutrient intake than other carnivorous plants as it can also extract some nutrients from the soil. This dual strategy showcases the plant's adaptive ingenuity for surviving in its harsh environment. Number 12. Moccasin Plant, Cephalotus Follicularis. In the southwestern corner of Australia, you'll find an unusual yet fascinating carnivorous plant, the moccasin plant or Albany pitcher plant, scientifically known as Cephalotus Follicularis. This plant is the only species in its genus and is known for its unique pitcher-shaped leaves that resemble tiny moccasins. 
The moccasin plant employs a pitfall trap strategy to capture its prey. It produces small, ground-hugging pitchers filled with a digestive fluid. The opening of the pitcher, or peristome, is slippery and emits an attractive scent, luring insects to investigate. Once an insect lands on the peristome, it loses its footing and slides down into the pitcher where it drowns in the fluid. What's distinctive about the moccasin plant is its dual leaf types, the carnivorous pitchers and non-carnivorous flat leaves. This dualism reflects the plant's adaptability to its environment. During the colder months when insect activity decreases, the plant produces more of the flat, photosynthetic leaves. As the weather warms and insect activity increases, it switches to producing more of the insect-catching pitchers. While not a significant source of food for larger animals, the pitchers of the moccasin plant provide a habitat for several specialized arthropods that have adapted to live in the deadly fluid. This micro-ecosystem adds another layer to the plant's ecological role, illustrating the intricate interconnections within nature. Despite its limited range and rarity, the moccasin plant showcases a fascinating evolutionary path in the world of carnivorous plants. Number 13. Albany Pitcher Plant, Cephalotus Native to Western Australia, the Albany Pitcher Plant, Cephalotus follicularis, is a low-lying herbaceous plant, notable for its distinctive pitcher-shaped leaves. These tiny, jug-shaped traps have earned it the colloquial name of the Albany Pitcher Plant. This plant's unique structure and carnivorous nature make it a fascinating subject of study in the botanical world. The trapping mechanism of the Albany pitcher plant resembles that of most pitcher plants. Its small pitchers are filled with a cocktail of digestive fluids. The rim of the pitcher, or the peristome, is slippery and lures insects with a nectar-like secretion. Once an insect lands on the peristome, it slips into the pitcher's deadly pool, where it is broken down by the plant's digestive enzymes and the nutrients are absorbed. One of the defining features of the Albany pitcher plant is its two distinct leaf types. Alongside the carnivorous pitchers, the plant also produces non-carnivorous leaves, which carry out photosynthesis and are involved in nutrient uptake from the soil. This morphological distinction demonstrates the plant's adaptability to changing environmental conditions. The Albany pitcher plant's pitchers also harbor a miniature ecosystem of organisms, including mosquito larvae and mites, which are capable of surviving in the pitcher's digestive fluids. These tiny inhabitants help in the digestion process of larger prey, establishing a synergistic relationship. Number 14. Trephiophyllum peltatum. Venturing into the tropical rainforests of West Africa, we find the Trifiophyllum peltatum, an unusual member of the carnivorous plant club. This fascinating plant is one of a kind, being the only known species of liana, a long-stemmed woody vine that is also carnivorous. Trifiophyllum peltatum is notable for having three distinct phases in its life cycle, each characterized by a different leaf type. In its juvenile stage, the plant produces short, non-carnivorous leaves. As it matures, the plant enters its carnivorous phase, producing long, narrow leaves covered with sticky hairs capable of trapping and digesting small insects. What sets Trifiophyllum peltatum apart from most carnivorous plants is its final stage, where it abandons carnivory. As it fully matures, it develops into a robust, climbing vine and produces large, non-carnivorous leaves, the plant produces a large, elongated fruit, and the carnivorous phase is not repeated in the plant's life cycle. This shift from a carnivorous to a non-carnivorous lifestyle is a rare phenomenon in the plant kingdom and is unique to Trifiophyllum peltatum. The plant's intriguing life cycle illuminates the diverse strategies plants can employ to survive and thrive in different environments. Despite the nutrient-poor soils of its native habitat, Trifiophyllum peltatum manages to grow into a vigorous vine, a testament to its unique evolutionary adaptation. Number 15. Roridula gorgonias. The captivating world of carnivorous plants takes us to the Finbos biome of South Africa, home to the unique Roridula gorgonias. A member of the Roridula genus, this plant is a testament to nature's knack for unusual symbiotic relationships. Roridula gorgonias, known commonly as the dew stick, is a tall, shrub-like perennial with a unique approach to carnivory. At first glance, Roridula gorgonias might seem similar to other carnivorous plants. 
Its slender, needle-like leaves bristle with long, hair-like protrusions, each tipped with a droplet of a sticky substance. This resinous secretion glistens in the sunlight, earning the plant its dew stick moniker. The adhesive droplets ensnare a variety of small insects, from flies to beetles, preventing their escape. However, unlike most carnivorous plants, Rorigula gorgonias doesn't possess the enzymes necessary to digest its ensnared prey. Instead, it relies on an unlikely ally, the Pameridia rorigulae, a small species of capsid bug. In a fascinating example of symbiosis, these bugs feast on the trapped insects, gaining sustenance from a meal they could not catch themselves. While feasting, the Pameridia rorigulae excrete waste rich in nitrogen, a vital nutrient that the dew stick absorbs through specialized glands on its leaf surface. In this way, Rorigula gorgonias indirectly benefits from its trapped insects, circumventing its lack of digestive enzymes. The Pomeridia rorigulae, in turn, are immune to the plant's sticky resin. They scuttle unencumbered over the plant's leaves, feeding, breeding, and laying eggs, their entire life cycle intricately tied to the Rorigula gorgonias. The relationship between the plant and the bug is so crucial that, in its absence, the Rorigula gorgonias has been found to grow less successfully. What's more, this remarkable interaction is selective. Other insects that may attempt to steal the dewstick's trapped prey, such as ants, are thwarted by the plant's sticky resin. This prevents any potential thieving and ensures that the symbiosis between the dewstick and Pameridia rorigulae is not disturbed. Studying Rorigula gorgonias also offers potential practical applications. Scientists are interested in the plant's sticky resin for its unique properties, including its resistance to drying out and its capability to trap a broad range of insects. As we continue to explore and understand this extraordinary plant and its distinct ecological niche, who knows what new knowledge and applications might unfold? In the dew stick's shimmering droplets, we see mirrored the vast potential and profound intricacies of our living world.